Hey guys, and welcome back to another video in this week's Dear Piggy Basic Algorithms and Java Tutorials. So in this week's video, we have a brand new topic to focus on, which I'm actually really excited about. And this week, we're going to be talking about bubble sort. So bubble sort is essentially something that, well, most of you guys will deem quite complicated. I'd say it's one of the harder topics that we're going to be going over with, especially when we start doing the code. Um, but Honestly, I feel like there are a lot of different programs that you can use to essentially replace bubble sort, but bubble sort is a must see 100% topic learned in every high school computer science course, college computer science course. So obviously we're going to want to include it into this, right? So like always, our first video will be on the introduction. I'm going to tell you a quick story about what's going on in the cookie business and then a quick um, code concept. And there's one more part that I want to add in today. This part in the class, I saved it to be talked about in um, the coding part, but I feel like to make our sections more even, we're going to go ahead and talk about the triangular sort method right now in this first video. So again, no coding for this video, all explanation, but I hope you guys will have some fun. So yeah, Introduction to bubble sort. My bad, guys. I have some allergies today. But um, basically, remember the cookie business, right? It is thriving and business is just booming. Um, and I want to make some major reforms to my business, right? Remember, this business is kind of just a self-owned business and I don't have the time and the effort to bake hundreds of different cookie flavors, right? So since business is booming, I only want to focus on baking the flavors that are the most popular, right? And so I have to say my absolute favorite part of this lesson, sorry guys, is not actually the code or bubble sort, but just looking at these delicious cookies. I mean, look at how good those are. Oh, I really want a cookie. Now. I'm craving like a nice, warm, gooey cookie. Doesn't matter what it is. I'm just craving a cookie, right? So since we're focusing on baking the cookies that are most popular, right? There's obviously flavors like chocolate chip and sugar and M&M and brownie. Those types, is brownie cookie a type of cookie? I don't even know. But we're focusing on baking these flavors that would be most popular, right? And so probably I also have some least popular ones that maybe aren't as popular. Oatmeal raisin, I'm personally a fan, but most people aren't. Um, whole wheat, nut, these are maybe flavors that aren't that popular. Right, so I have a whole list of my cookie sales, cookie flavor sales. It says the flavor and how many cookies I sell from it every single day. And so what I want to do is get rid of the cookie flavors that don't sell very well. But in order to do this, I need to sort my cookie flavor sales from least to greatest, right? So now the question is, how do I find a way to sort my cookie flavor sales in an array from least to greatest so that I can see which cookies are the most popular? Right. So again, I previously obviously did not know that a cookie business would require so much coding and thinking. But as you can see, every single time, there is quite a lot of stuff that we can do that is coding wise. Right. And I know I sound probably pretty miserable right now, but, um, you know, allergies, pain in the butt. OK, so that is my story for the day. Now let's talk about the bubble sort concept. So there's actually quite a bit of thinking involved in this, and it's not as easy as you look. One really quick disclaimer, it looks like these things are sorting back and forth, but they really aren't. They're doing a triangular motion, which we'll talk about in one second. But for now, a bubble sort is basically a simple sorting algorithm that repeatedly compares pairs of numbers and swaps them. And like I mentioned earlier, everything is in a triangular sort of motion, right? So basically, after each iteration, you guys know that iteration kind of means like one turn, one round, the greatest number in the array will move to the very end. And so when you repeat that over and over, in the end, all the biggest numbers are going to move to the very end until you have an array sorted from least to greatest. Right, so that's the concept behind it. Let's take a look at this picture, which I personally think is very nice. This is one iteration. It looks like a lot, doesn't it? But this is one turn because this is considered one turn because we've only gone through all the pairs in the array once. 
So let's look. The first pair is 8 and 7. Now, 8 and 7, 8 is greater than 7, so we swap them. Again, swap is not like this. It's more of a triangular swap, but we'll get into that in a second. So 8 and 7 swap, and so now we're doing 7, 8, 1, 2, 5, and 8 and 1 are compared. Again, 1 and 8 swap. So we have 7, 1, 8, 2, 5, 2 and 8 swap. And then finally, eight and five will swap in the end. So does everybody see that in the greatest, uh, the number in the array that is the greatest is eight. And then at the end, it gets swapped to the very back. So after one turn, the greatest number has been put to the very back. Now, if we were to run this another time, our next greatest number, seven, would be put to the back, but still in front of eight, right? So over and over and over, this happens until we have our numbers sorted from least to greatest. Right, so that is the concept behind bubble sort. So now the last part that I want to add in that usually we don't really talk about um, in our first intro video is our triangular sort method. So I have my whiteboard ready to go that I will kind of draw this for you guys. Um, this is my first time using this white web whiteboard thing, but um, I think I'm a pretty big fan. So we'll see about that. And yeah, let's talk about this. So in our array. I mentioned before that we were swapping our numbers, right? And so for the first example, let's pretend we're just going to focus on the first two because each time we only focus on a pair, right? So I'm going to use my finger to draw this. So we have one box here, we have another box here, and as we know currently we have eight in the first box and seven in the second box. Now we know that we need to swap these two. Obviously, if seven is in the first box and eight is in the second box, we do not need to swap them because they're already sorted. But since they're in the wrong order, we need to sort them. Now, the idea behind bubble sort is that you will have a temp variable. And this is something we'll get into in the next video. But the temp video is like a temporary variable that one of my students said was like a temporary resting station for numbers. So temp will always end up switching the numbers out, but it's kind of just there, guys, as a temporary place for our numbers to rest, right? So our numbers will be put into temp and then taken out of temp and things like that. So this, I guess I kind of want to show you guys that this is like our triangle. Does everybody see this triangle? This is why we call it a triangular motion. This is our triangle. Now let's get into the second part. So how our triangular sort method works is our goal in the end is to have seven come into the first box and eight be in the second box. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to first draw our two boxes here. But instead, we're going to take eight and assign eight to our temp. So now temp is going to be eight. Our second box is still going to be seven. This box is going to be empty. So there's nothing in here. Does everybody see what happened? Our first index, so index A, we can call this index A and index B. Index A's value has been assigned to temp. So temp is equal to index A. Everything else is the same. Now, since our first box is empty, we can go ahead and move seven into our first box, right? So it'll look something like this. Our first box, our first two boxes here, those are small boxes. I probably should have made them bigger. Seven will be in here. Temp is still eight because remember, we're moving everything one at a time. And now this box is empty. So does everybody see how this part, it went in that movement? So over here, we are still empty. And so now index A, um, so index A, temp was equal to index A in this step over here. Temp was equal to index A. In this part, index A is now equal to index B, because remember, this is index B. So we brought index B value and put it into index A. Now the last thing we want to do is we want to bring our eight back into the second box, right? So how we do that is we give our two boxes over here and we have temp, but since temp, we are going to bring that eight down into the second box. So now the second box is eight. The first box doesn't change. It's seven. And voila, we are back into the original part that we wanted the most, right? With seven in the front, eight behind it, and then temp empty. So now we have our sorted pair, right? So now this is sorted pair. It is exactly what we want over here. Right? Isn't that beautiful? And does everybody see how essentially we went in this motion? We brought um, in our, I guess, three lines. We went up first, 
for one, we went sideways first for second for two, and then we went down for three. So that is kind of a triangular motion there. That's why I call it our triangular sort method. I kind of made that name up. But does everybody see this? This is, in my opinion, a really great process because it makes sure that our numbers are sorted in the end without any extra hassle, right? Same thing for 58 and 19. We start off with 58, 19, temp is empty. Then we go to Empty first box, temp 58, 19 is still say the same. Bring 19 over, temp is still 58, second box empty, and bring 58 down from temp into the second box. Right, so this is our triangular sort method. Afterwards, in our next video, when we start coding, we're going to start to see how we can write this in the code, but that's kind of like the swapping idea in our bubble sort. Obviously, there's going to be more to it in the actual code, but for now, I hope you guys understood the basic thought process behind bubble sort. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I'll see you guys in the next video for some actual code. Bye, guys.